didn't come to hear just about us, but we'd like to hear something about uh, Rich and um, I think uh, the time we have. Sure, how are we doing on time? I think we only have another you know, 20 minutes okay, or so, so before you have to leave. So. I, you know, and I, by the way, I'm flattered by the turnout, but I have the lights. Uh, but, but having said that, um, we had a really good day, uh, and, and it started out with a, an, a, a similar conversation at a company in the Milliard, Manchester, that does advanced prosthetics and bionics. And so another R&D-driven, healthcare-related company. And you get very similar stories. Um, but, uh, you know, without giving you, you really don't want to indulge in a stump speech now, but what I do want to say is, is if I could encapsulate why I'm running for Congress, it's to make thinking like this be the rule rather than the exception. And I think, uh, you know, one thing, for any of you who are thinking about running for something, I'll tell you right now, the barriers to entry, if you're normal, are high. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an easy business to get into. It is, uh, if you're not, you know, um, you know, born into it, or a career politician, or something like that. If you have a career, which I did in the defense industry for, for years, um, you know, putting your brakes on your family and your life, and then trying to, to change things for the better, the system isn't designed for that. It's a, it's a high barrier. And uh, so I look at thinking like this and say, geez, I wonder if the barrier to entry is high here. Of course it is. I mean, you just went through the whole regime is, you know, built to discourage right. this kind of behavior. We were talking about Uber today and how the, ma the magic of Uber was someone said, what if, it, what if I take everything about riding a cab and that I hate and get rid of it and then build an app around what I like and then you end up with Uber, except that in order for Uber to succeed, they had to go around the existing system because yeah. it, was, it was built to discourage that kind of innovation. Right. So if I could sum up what I'd like to be able to do as a member of Congress, it's to flip that environment on its head. Now, it's, it was said that Clint Eastwood, um, when he would get a script for a movie, he would spend hours taking out dialogue, right? There'd be all these words on the page, and anybody who's seen a Clint Eastwood movie, especially yeah. one that's got him in it, right? Yeah. He doesn't say very much, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. But it's a more effective and powerful movie. Yeah. And uh, that, I sense, is going to be the measure of, of my success if I'm elected. Not what I add, but what I remove. <laughs> and in so doing, hopefully free, uh, free the kind of thinking that we're talking about. So um, I could go on much longer, um, but but that that's the sensibilities that I come from. Our our private sector sensibilities. You mean you don't want to add a couple hundred pages to the Federal Register every year? So, <laughs> gee, um, I do if they were cartoons. Something fun would be okay, but yeah, not. Uh, not what we're talking about. I mean, look, uh, let's face it. Think of the three areas where, where the government has aggressively uh, uh, intruded in areas that they weren't. Healthcare, um, federal financial aid slash student loans, taxes. And in each case, we're talking about the same thing, which is this cynicism over ACA right now is very high because it's opaque. You don't know what you're paying. You don't know what you're paying for things anymore. You don't know if you're, when you're paying your taxes, are you really convinced that you're paying the, the right? You know, if you go to five different preparers, you're going to get five different answers. Mm -hmm. that's, that's cynicism. <coughs> and, and, it's, and it's happening, it's happening everywhere. So uh, that's, that's not an additive problem. That's a, that's a removal. <coughs> that's that's taking, taking uh, regulations out. Well, we, uh, so many of us are software developers or have been software developers. And as you pile more changes and layers and layers of software, and you don't, and you don't every once in a while delete or start from scratch and redo it, you get something that will never work properly, uh, that you can't modify quickly, you can't respond to needs, you name it. So, you know, in the industry that we're in, uh, we, we uh, matter of fact, my medical shop was completely redesigned. Um, you know, a year and a half in, completely redone as you learn more. You go and you have, to have the opportunity to completely redo it the right way. So, yeah. you know, tax code definitely needs to be flushed. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you know, like, it's, it's, way over, yeah. it's way overdue. Yeah, no, well, that, I mean, that's part of the thing Steve's here. I mean, uh, uh, you know, at the end of the day, anything, any problem you want to talk about, 
at, at the end of the day, there's going to be something involving the tax code. And uh, uh, as far as the economic growth that we should be having and are not, ultimately, we have to do with the tax code. Um, but just, just you know, quickly, I'm, was, I'm from Manchester. That's where I was born and raised. I went to school at UNH. Met my wife there. Five kids. Who's from so, UNH here? Raise your hand. Okay. All right. Um, I, I, unlike you, I majored in crew. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was on the rowing team. My wife was a coxswain, and I was a <laughs> and all that stuff. So, uh, yeah. so you were rowing fast to get away from her. Uh, so, so the, the relationship. Well, the she's a coxswain. I'm the rower. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing's small. changed. She's yeah. still pushing yeah. me around, bossing <laughs> me around. Pick up this. Put it over there. Uh, but I tell you that because that's the that ultimately that is the lens through which I will get public policy. Not so much is it going to benefit me, but what's it going to do. You know, one of my kids going to be inherited, and, um, and and if boy, if we could solve the problems in the way you're thinking, uh, we we we'd achieve that. Um, so, I want to thank you for this TED talk that you've had me have. Uh, <laughs> and uh, but I do, you know, you know, obviously, I'm, if you're interested in my campaign, there's ways to do that. You, can, you know, Google the campaign site. But um, but I'm honored to have Steve here because. Um, you know, his presence in New Hampshire is an indicator that he doesn't just write a lot of fancy words as a publisher, which he does, but, uh, but he walks the walk. Uh, he's, he wants to change the landscape, and so he will invest himself in particular campaigns, and this is one of them, I'm honored. And, uh, and you can get hold of me anytime. Him, you can't. So I'm gonna say, let me, let me welcome Steve to, to say yeah. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rich, and uh